Hey, so if you're watching this video, you are up to looking at kinematic equations. And they are a physicist's best friend. So kinematics is all about things that are in motion, but are not taking into account any of the forces involved. Okay, so you're just looking at things that are moving um, and where they're going to be or how fast they're going to be going. So as you know, we can put motion on graphs. So this is a distance time graph. And if we had information here, we could actually calculate some stuff from this graph to find speed. Um, that would be like finding the gradient. Uh, if we had a speed time or velocity time graph, we could also find out a couple of things. We could use the gradient to find acceleration. And we could also calculate the area under the graph to find the distance. Someone has been very organized and they have combined all of these kinds of equations that we can do and they've put them together so that we don't always have to draw a graph and we can do some of these um, calculations a lot quicker. So that's how we get these kinematic equations. So they are derived from things we already know and from um, manipulating information of a graph. Do not worry about where they come from. These are the kinematic equations that you are given in your exam. So they are going to be in your resource sheet. You're always going to have them. And you may notice that all of these equations have got some of these things. They've got initial velocity and final velocity, acceleration, distance or displacement, whatever you want to think of it, and time. So if we look at this one here, you can see it has got final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration and time. So that one's actually missing distance out of these five here. Distance is not um, in this equation. So if you wanted to find out distance or you had got, you did have the distance of something in your um, question, you probably wouldn't be able to use this equation because there's nowhere for you to put that information in. Here we have final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and now we do have distance, but in here we don't have time. So if we're asked to calculate time, knowing a whole heap of other things, we wouldn't use this equation. Um, this one here has V, I, V, F, D, and T. So that one does not have any acceleration in it. So we couldn't use that one to calculate acceleration. Uh, and this one here has acceleration, time, distance, and um, initial velocity, but it does not have the final velocity. So when you are given your kinematic equations, um, the, the fastest way to find the one you need to use is to look for the equation that does not have um, the thing that you are not given. So uh, let's do an example together so you can see what I mean. So here we have a car. Oh my gosh, I draw a car. It is at rest. When people say that something is at rest, they mean that it's initial velocity is zero and it accelerates uniformly in other words the acceleration is going to be a constant um, thing so it's going to be a, a constant number um, and that number is 1.5 meters per second per second so if we have this information how far would the car have gone after 20 seconds when we say how far we're looking for what is the distance and here we've been given another piece of information we know that time is 20 in physics time is measured in seconds right so be very careful if people start saying minutes or hours so with this one here how far would the car go after 20 seconds oh I'm gonna need my calculator and I'm going to need a kinematic equation that has VI um, A, acceleration, here we go, um, T and D. 
So that one is actually missing the F, isn't it? Right? So it would be this one here. We've got V, I, T, acceleration, and we want to find out the distance. It's very handy that this one's actually already rearranged for us so that we can just plop in the numbers and find what the distance is. You may have to do some algebraic rearranging. Fun times. This is why we take maths, right? So what I like to do is write the equation out again that I use, and I always put it in a square. So we're going to use this one here, VIT plus half AT squared. Okay. So distance is VI times time. Well, in this case, VI is zero. So if VI is zero times any sort of number, that's going to give us zero already. So I like sometimes when this happens, you can actually cancel that part out because any number times zero is just zero. Then we're going to have plus half 80 squared. So distance is actually... When we say you could, you could go half times 80 squared, so you could go 80 squared times 0 0.5, or you could think that 80 squared is over 1, and then you've got 1 over 2, so you could go 80 squared divided by 2. There are, you know, so this just depends on the way you've been taught how to do your maths. All we have to do now is substitute our numbers in. So um, that's what distance equals. So we're going to have 1.5 times 20 squared divided by 2. When I use my calculator, I always like to do like a, a follow like a big mass kind of thing. So I like to go 20 squared equals, then I times that by 1.5, then I press equals, um, because then I know that that whole number will be now divided by 2. The answer is 300. 300 watt, we're calculating distance. So that's 300 meters. I always like to underline my answer so people can find it easily. Another question is, okay, well, with this car and everything we know about this car, what would its speed be after 100 meters? So uh, I might do this one in blue. Speed uh, is the question. And it would be after a certain amount of time, so it would be its final speed. 100 metres is a distance. And remember, we already knew the initial velocity and the acceleration. You could... Um, no, yeah, that's right. So we need to use our original um, information. Sometimes if you've calculated something, you can use that information as well. Um, but it's a bit annoying because sometimes you get rounding error. So I always like to use the information that I've been given at the start of the question. So looking at our equations, we need to find something that has VI, VF, A and D. So it actually doesn't have time. Uh, it would be this one here. So again, I like to write it in so that I can use it next to me. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. All right. So remember, initial velocity was zero. So VI squared, or zero squared, it's just going to be zero. Then we're going to add 2 times A times D. So that can be cancelled. So that gives us VF squared. So it depends on what you like to do. Um, what I would do is reword that to just say, um, VF, final velocity, is equal to the square root of 2AD. So then I would substitute my numbers in. 2 times acceleration, which is 1.5, times distance, which in this case we want to know is 100 metres. And again, I would do that in my calculator. And I would square root everything last so that I know it's doing it the right way around. So 2 times 1.5 times 100. Square root the answer gives me 17.3. Now, when you're in level 2 physics, there are bonus points 
for giving your answer to the correct number of significant figures. So we have been told in the question that we had acceleration measured um, to two significant figures. So if we look at the information we're given, 100 is a bit iffy There's with the sig figs there. So we'd go with, okay, here we've got two significant figures. Our answer should be given to two significant figures, which would mean that it would come down to 17. 17 watt, it's velocity, 17 meters per second. Um, you can do this, you can, so you can give your full answer that you've calculated, then your rounded answer, and then, oh, in brackets, just imply that you've rounded that to two significant figures. So I hope that explains a little bit um, about what these equations are and how you use them. Feel free to give them um, give these examples a go yourself and let me know if you have any questions.